Hello, world. We are live. Yes, we are live. Yes, how you all doing? So, I normally go live when I'm charging an EV. So, that's what I'm doing. I'm charging an EV. So, as if you've been following me on Instagram, you will have seen that I've been running a Mustang, a Ford Mustang Marquee, although there's no Ford badges on this car anywhere. I mean, even the, even the Mustang gets Ford badges, but this one doesn't get any Ford badges at all. Uh, hello to, hello to Reza, hello to Ralph, hello to the Octane Addict, hello to Tom's Life with Cars, how you all doing? So yeah, I'm sitting here uh, recharging the Marquee. Now the Marquee has been, I have to say, in terms of range and charging, quite impressive. Because I got the car with 206 miles of range on it. I'd done 164. And um, I still had about 60 miles of range left, which would put me at about 220, 225, nearly 230 miles of actual range actual real world range uh which is quite extraordinary really and um it's charging pretty quickly now too you would think that wow you know that big a battery okay it's got a big range it runs a long time and i bet you know it takes hours to charge it i'm sure at home it probably does um but i started charging this is now 12 30 it's coming up to 12 30 hello to hukane car sourcing it's now coming up to 12 30 I started charging this about 20 minutes ago. I just went into the shops and came back because uh, it's a bit thirsty, so I wanted to get something to drink. Um, I started charging this about 20 minutes ago. It's now, uh, and it's charged, it was down to, I think it was 29%. And now it's already on 46%. So it's gained about 16, 17%. Hello to Tim, how you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm fine, thank you again. I'm fine. How are you doing? That's not bad. Morrison's. Lemon and lime sparkling water. There you go. There's some free publicity for them. I didn't know what to expect there. But that was that was like, I walked in there and I thought, what's, what's the cheapest thing I can get? That was 60 pence. So that I'm, I'm presently surprised by that. That's really tasty. Lemon and lime sparkling water. Flavored spring water fused with lemon and lime. <laughs> hmm. That's nice. So hello to all those who are joining. Hi Tim. Yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good for the health. Yeah. Hi to, I, to Ali. How to, uh, Sham. How to, um, Salman. Uh, Oh, hello. Okay, let's do this, Salman. Let's do this. You just had a demo of the 330 EM Sport Pro. I was really impressed. Ah, good for you, man. That's a really good car. So, I think we are going to be joined by somebody. Has it worked? Anyway, whilst I'm waiting to see if that's worked. If that hasn't worked, send me another request. What's going on? So, hello, hello to Kamui, how are you doing? So, uh, hello, so yeah, so 47% already, 80% uh, at, so it's actually telling me, it's giving me a time, and it's telling me that I'll be done to 80% at 10 past 1. I wanted to get a bit more than 80%, but 80% will do me actually, car goes back in two days. So, let's try that again. View requests go live. Come on, dude, this should work. Um, the CLA A3 engine is quite small. The 330E has a good two liter turbo. Yeah, 330E is pretty good. I did review that car, as you may have seen, and it's quite good. Um, I'm still not convinced by that whole plug in thing, but otherwise, it was a pretty good thing. Um, so, yeah, so one, so 11 past one, it's weird, it's slowed down a bit now. It's saying 11 past one, it will give me 80% charge. I think 80% will do me. It's going back. The car is going back um, tomorrow or day after tomorrow. And judging by the performance of how, it, how it's been behaving so far, the rest of the mileage is going to be around town. I'm in a Maki. I'm in a Ford Maki. For those of you just joining, I am in a Ford Mustang Maki to give it its full name. 
I, I've, been ha I've had this car for a few days now. Got it with 206 miles of range. Used 164 miles so far. And the range dropped to 29 miles, which actually gives me a real-world total of over 220 or 225 miles, which is actually quite extraordinary. So I'm driving it around town mostly until today. I managed to recoup about 20, 25 miles on the car. And um, today I took it out for a longer run. So I took it out for about a 70-mile run out of town. Um, a cha nice, a cha, very, cha, very nice, yes. The launch of the car with track pack was nice. What are you talking about? Are you talking about the Marquis? The Hoonigan version. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That's not really this car. Let's be honest. That's a completely stripped out, you know, purpose built drift car. Although this one is the base model. It's a rear wheel drive, uh, not the extended range, regular range. And still, you know, I'm impressed with the range. So that's saying something. And uh, now I've seen the video. I shared it on. Uh, I actually posted it on my YouTube channel. Um, so if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see that, that whole video. I, I actually posted it there. So, um, yeah, so this is a regular one. And, uh, yeah, well, I don't know why this is not working. Salman is requesting to join. I'm saying, okay, go live. I've hit go live. So why isn't that catching on? I don't understand. But I'd love to talk to Salman right now because Salman is a big, what I call EV evangelist. EV evangelist. So people are huge. They were early. Hello? Does it work? Can you hear me? Hi, Shazad. How are Hello you? Hello there. How are you doing? I can. How are, how are you? Where are you? Pretty good. I'm actually out here uh, right. close to my office in D3. Right. Very close to are, a charging station. Are you outdoors station, or indoors? Believe it or not. Are, are you, do you have to wear I a mask? I am outdoors at the moment, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, pretty wow, much. Wow, okay. So <laughs> Outdoors, we're, you have to wear it. We're, we're, we're oh, much yeah. more oh, relaxed yeah. here in the UK now. Special. How you doing, man? It's been ages. It has. It has. It's a pleasure to see you. And, uh, yeah, pleasure to see you out uh, about in the oh, Mustang listen, EV. Listen, Salman, Honestly, somebody's say, asking you a I'm question. I'm really nice looking forward to having that. Salman. Are they Edith? What are your glasses? <laughs> No, no, it's just a generic name brand. Nobody's <laughs> asked me about mine. I'm wearing brand. ray bans so there you go. <laughs> I wish, I wish they were. But, uh, yeah, go on, go on, Zaman. You were saying, so I'm up to 51% now, so it's doing well. Actually, yeah, the time has improved. I've gone down from 111 to 109 p.m. It's saying 80% charge. So I'm in the marquee. Have you been following my, uh, my, my, uh, my exploits in the marquee uh, online, etc.? Oh, I love it. I love it. You know what? The screen, uh, it's bigger than the one I have in the board, it's so massive. I'm very jealous. It is, it's it. like a television. <laughs> it's huge. You know, it, it's, They really go down the whole Tesla route with this, you know. But I like the fact that you get a, a, an actual tactile, real volume knob. That's quite good. You know, I really want to see that in person because I don't know whether it's stuck on. It looks whether it's stuck on actually, or whether it's actually really just floating, you know. I would love the floating effect. Because it's... It's clicking, and it's turning, and the, the only thing I can assume is that it is actually embedded into the screen. It's somehow, I don't know if they've cut it into the screen. Oh, you know what? It might actually be stuck on. You might be right, you know. I think you're right. I think it's actually stuck on. That's really <laughs> clever. Yeah, I, lo I love it, though. I, I think the Discovery has the them, too. The new Land Rover uh, Discovery has them. They do have, yeah. They have something similar. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this is, this is some sort of uh, uh, sticking-on technology. Who is it? Uh, uh, Hukane says, I wish we could have energy like you, mate. Love your passion. Keep it. Oh, oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you very much. Uh, Reza says, the Ford Maki is the Farouk Makdumi. Reza likes to come up with unusual names for cars. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to tell you something really interesting. So for everybody so watching, so so is over in, you're in the UAE right here. now. Where are you exactly? Yeah, I'm in Dubai. I'm uh, close to Business, to business Bay, Bay. Very close to Burj Khalifa. And uh, we have a charging station here. Very interesting. <laughs> I have a very interesting charging station. So can you see the right. two Teslas parked behind me? Okay, Tim, Tim wants to know what electric car We're does Salman have. Back. 
Uh, I own a Gold DB. When I first met I you, you had something Gold else. DB. I had a Zoe, yeah. The, when we met in 2016, it was a Renault Zoe. And I bought a Bolt now in 2019. In fact, my, uh, my family has three cars now that are electric. My brother just bought his... Uh, Tesla Model 3. My so and you are one of the first people the to be sort of daily driving an EV in Dubai, right? Yeah, I was actually the first private buyer of a Zoe in the, in the Middle East, I think. So, yeah, quite the thing back then. And we've moved quite a, quite a long ways. If you see behind me, you'll see that there's Tesla's charging back to back. At this charging so, station so here. So is it becoming a big thing now, like the cars in Dubai? I mean, even in the lot, what, in the two, two, in the two years that I've been away from, from oh, the UAE now? Oh, yeah. Since uh, the Model 3 has opened up, I think there's like thousands of cars. We estimate between two to three thousand cars have been sold last year. Uh, just the Model 3s alone. And then the Taycan has also made a big launch. In fact, the Taycan launched very close to here in D3. Uh, they had their initial launch with Burj Khalifa fireworks and stuff. So it was a pretty big deal back, big deal back then. So last, late um, last we've year. got some skeptics on our channel watching right now. So Raza is saying the charging station in Dubai is called the ground from whence the petrol issues. So, so he's, he's not convinced, clearly. What would you say to, <laughs> to, to, our, to my good mate Raza? Although he's been, he, he's actually been in this marquee with me. We so the thing to, is, uh, uh, we drove to the classic car show together the other day. That's awesome. Well, uh, Riza, the thing is that uh, you're. Well, he's right. Uh, that yes, the the electricity we get is uh, from uh, fossil fuels, but it is actually a natural gas uh, plant that we have here, and not a petrol-driven plant. So if you look at it, uh, you know, if you do the math and all that, it's about twenty percent cleaner to drive an EV in the UAE than it is to drive a petrol car, which is not a lot, but one can argue that's better than, you know, driving a petrol car straight up. So yeah, there's work that we can do, but uh, they have been, they have launched their new nuclear plant here in Dubai, uh, and they're also launching a lot of solar, like the world's biggest solar. So a lot of that helps make the grid a bit cleaner, you know, they're, they're so working towards a better cleaner grid. Car sourcing, uh, I think, who's, ba who's based in Pakistan, and he's based in the UK and Pakistan, he's saying there's a big boom in Pakistan now with EV. MG has launched an EV version, um, and Taycans, uh, there are e-trons and Taycans are being imported. So that's quite impressive to see that that's beginning to happen in Pakistan. I th I th I'm quite surprised because for a country that tends to have a lot of outages, and that's, you know, and that's just for domestic use, I'm quite surprised that they're able to um, to have electric cars and to be charging them. Do you think that's viable in a place like that, to someone? Well, I, I actually haven't. I mean, in India, where there are brownouts, it can definitely get challenging. But I think that uh, when you have an electric car, it uh, it's kind of like a it works both ways, doesn't it? Because you can maybe power your house <laughs> with the electric cars charge you know when your power's out and then obviously when uh, the power's back on you know your car charges because quite a big battery they have in there isn't it i mean you have a you're sitting Don't on a pretty me. big battery yourself aren't you, about that. <laughs> but actually i have to say this has been really impressive okay car sourcing says the f40 was lit so he's talking about the f40 that was at the classic car show which uh, all f40s are lit they're just brilliant reza is still not convinced he's like yeah there's no shortage of hot air in dubai <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Ken Carlos is say, he's saying, is there a mock-up sound which makes exhaust notes? Um, it, it doesn't make exhaust notes, but there is a sound simulator. And it's quite interesting because I just went out for a longer drive now because I, was, I wanted to record the in-car driving for my review that I'm doing on this car. Mostly uh, for the last few days, I've been driving the car in town. So this morning I went, uh, you know, I did a 70-mile loop out um, towards... Uh, you know, up into Hertfordshire and found some roads around there. And at that point, I switched it into, there's got two additional modes. And in addition to the whisper mode, it's got an active mode and an untamed mode, right? And then when you go into the, when you, you can turn the sound on all the time. And it's just, it's just generally a drone. But when you go into the active and the untamed and you really get on it, then it starts to get a bit more, I wouldn't say growly, but suddenly there's a bit more of a roar. I, 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 was, I was saying, uh, one of the comments I was making in the review was that in the untamed mode, they should have put a V8 simulator in there, you know, just for the heck of it. I mean, why not? How do you feel about, you know, uh, simulated sounds, uh, Salman? 
You know, I, honestly, a lot of these cars, they do that already. I don't know if it was Jaguar or Porsche, but the sounds that were mocked into the, into the car's uh, speakers, they were done by, I believe, uh, a very famous composer, uh, Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer did the, uh, the, the noises the for one of the cars. Right, right. I think it's a Jaguar I-Pace or was it the Porsche Taycan? I can't remember. Yeah, but it's a, I mean, that's this true. is a thing that's, that's, that's been happening yeah. even in petrol vehicles. I mean, when you hear like... The more new BMWs, yeah. it's, a, it's a sound that's piped yeah. into the, the speakers. The Jaguar so, F-Pace you know. <laughs> uh, plug-in, 400E, uh, I think 400, 400 something, that's got, that's got simulated sound. And it does sound really good, I have to say. Reza's conceding a little bit. I have to say the Mach-E is utterly impressive. The mock-up simulator is just nice enough to be there without it being imposing. Oh, we might be converting uh, Reza, uh, it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> All men like sounds, don't we? Wink, wink, says OK in car sourcing. And uh, Reza says the car does have a super aggressive bonnet, so it does have presence. Yeah, you know what? This car has been getting a lot of looks in London, you know, and even a few comments. I even had, I was driving through the middle of London, and I had somebody from across the street shout, Oh, that's one of them new Mustangs. That's the first one I've seen. So it's got quite a presence. Are, are you guys, is there any, any news about this coming to Dubai yet? So they're, they're estimating that it'll be somewhat time at the end of the year, but uh, no official word from our dealer here, Altair. Uh, I hope that they bring it in soon. In fact, they're uh, looking to us, because I uh, also have a startup for uh, retailing electric vehicles. They're looking to yeah. us to kind of uh, give them the advice and give them some... So tell, a, tell people a little bit about know? yourself, because I, I should just add that although I've introduced uh, Salman as an EV angelist, as somebody who's been a very early adopter of EVs, but you are, you are a car guy, though, aren't you? You are, you are into cars properly. Oh, I love I love cars. In fact, uh, I'm uh, currently driving a, uh, a 2001 <laughs> wow. classic Beetle, which is uh, from Mexico. That's a bit of a project, and, though, isn't uh, it? Oh, I love this one. Oh, yeah, it's it's awesome. That is a little bit of a project. <laughs> it's a little uh, wink wink <laughs> project that hopefully will get done at the end of the month. And uh, I'm going to be happy to share with you, Sheza, when the time comes. But yeah, I love cars, and uh, I actually love the history of motoring. You know, very fascinating things that we've done. A lot of people here, in fact, the UAE, they think that it's all about the, the, the luxury cars. But I've been out to Flat 12 and a couple of the vintage car guys. The vintage car guys in the UAE yeah, are some of the nicest definitely. people you'll meet. <laughs> and so you know, I love seeing yeah, love seeing the old Citroen DSs, love seeing the old, um, you know, the, the old Chevy pickup trucks. It's a great car culture. And it's, a, it's happy. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty glad, awesome. We're going to the car it, show you know? here. Reza says, Salman sounds like he could be your EV consultant. You know, in a sense, he is, man. In a sense, he is. I do often talk to him about EVs. That's true. <laughs> and uh, Hukain Karsas says he has a question for Salman. Shoot, man. Say, what, what's your question? Just put it on here. And I'm sure he'll answer it. So, Salman, I want to ask you about... Uh, retrofitting electric motors to classic cars, you know, because we've seen a few of those here. There were there were a couple at the show that we attended. There's the Everati Porsche, which I was checking out at the uh, London Concourse. What's your take on 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 that sort of thing? I'm I'm in I'm in split minds about it, to be honest with you. You know what? Uh, honestly, uh, here's the thing. Uh, there are two. I'm also in two minds about because. I think a classic engine is a classic engine, and you should respect that. But uh, if the car was going to go in the dumps, if the car has uh, has has an engine that is gone anyway, then you know you might as well just uh, just convert it, give it a new life. Because uh, if you're going to take an engine for a classic car, you're going to take it from another classic car. So you would might as well give it uh, a life by making it electric, and it makes it easier to drive. Yeah, it makes think, it easier to. Yeah, own, I so think I'm with you. I think uh, I'm with you right? there. In so terms of if, if the engine was already gone. And you would you were gonna have to rebuild it or source a new engine, then yeah, then that potentially that's a good route to go down. But where I have an issue with it is when people rip out, you know, a perfectly good engine and then replace it with an, with an electric motor. I have a, a bit of an issue with that. Salman seems to be static at the moment. We may have lost him. Okay, and car sourcing says asks why are people a bit scared about buying cars from Dubai rare and high end cars. What do you mean exactly by that? Um, we have uh, Hakusaka with a Kenmari uh, engine. Yeah, what do you mean exactly by that? Because, you know, you can buy cars from there, from Dubai, but uh, you do, like anywhere in the world, you'd have to be a bit careful and look carefully 
um, and look at the provenance and the uh, history and how the car has been looked after and cared for and all the rest of it. Now, you do find that some cars, I do often say to people that cars that have been originally sourced, if we're talking classic cars and high-end classic cars, that have been originally sourced in the, in the Gulf region, um, the, the, the fact is that they would have had a hard life because the climatic conditions, the sand that gets everywhere, the heat that melts everything, and sometimes the level of care and the servicing may not be approaching that which we may be used to um, you know, in the West and in other countries, um, may not have existed. So therefore, I do always caution people that you've got to be careful if you're going to buy, you know, a high-end uh, or a classic or high-end collectible classic car in the UAE. However, there is a thriving market of imports and exports. So cars that are coming into the market from outside, I wouldn't say that there's an issue with those cars uh, whatsoever. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's, a, it's a simple case of, you know, doing your homework, you know, doing due diligence and just checking the cars thoroughly. Um, you're talking about manipulating. So you've, got, you've got to elaborate. What do you mean by that? I mean, there used to be a whole thing before where cars were being converted to right-hand drive, et cetera, et cetera, and Sharjah and all of that sort of, the VINs and all, yeah. No, to be honest... Uh, that doesn't go on any more in the Middle East than it goes on elsewhere in the world. I mean, to be honest, that's, uh, that's as much true here as it is anywhere else, you know. And, and I mean here, by here I mean in the UK. You know, this kind of skullduggery goes on everywhere in the world. So, but that's what I mean about, you know, being careful, being, you know, uh, exercising due diligence, exercising responsibility, doing your research, you know, getting cars checked out, checking the history, all of that sort of stuff. This is important. It was always important and it will always remain important. Um, so yeah, like I said, home cars that were domestic in the Middle East, I would be extra, extra careful. I'm not saying don't buy them, but I would be extra, extra careful about where those cars lived, uh, how they were sourced, how they were looked after, but also what wear and tear has the car suffered because, you know, there is, uh, like I said, a lot of damage can happen from the climate, from the heat, from the sand, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, we left the skylines due to the same reason. Yeah, skylines, to be honest, were one of the notorious ones, you know, because there was a lot of stuff that used to go on, particularly, I think, in the 80s, 90s, and 2000, early 2000s, where a lot of cars were being imported through the, through the UAE market. Some of those cars are still there, you know. They, they're, designed, they're meant for export only, so you can't actually drive them. You can't register them in Dubai. If you go to some of the car suits in the back of Dubai, Sharjah, and Ajman, You'll find cars that actually are due for export. They're not actually to be registered in the UAE. Um, but some of these cars were taken there and they were changed around. And they, a lot of them ended up here, to be honest, here in the UK. A lot of the grey imports ended up here and people ended up losing money because those cars were eventually sourced by uh, Interpol or police, if you like. And they were taken off them. So uh, they, because they turned out to be stolen cars. So, which is, you know, a tragic story, to be honest. So, um, so, that, so, again, so it's a bit of an issue uh, with cars, but to be honest, that is an issue that applies anywhere in the world. Uh, I think it's less of an issue now in the UAE than it used to be, to be fair. I think it's less of an issue now. Battery conked off. Uh, <laughs> uh, no worries, Salman. It was great to chat to, with you. Uh, thanks so much for joining uh, and, and giving us that incredible insight into your passion for electric vehicles and also the status of uh, electric vehicles and charging uh, in the UAE at the moment. And I'm sure I'll catch you again soon in, in a future broadcast on Instagram Live. So in, at the moment, we are now at 68% charge. I'd like to get it up to about 80% if I can, but I've already got a 170 mile range. It's giving me, so I've gone from 29 mile range at uh, 10 past 12. It's now 12.52, so 42 minutes, and I've gained 150, well, 145 miles, 140 miles or so I've gained uh, in range, which isn't bad. And depending how you're driving in town, that will probably increase again. So hello to Nick and Salman. Yeah, no problem. We'll join you again next. So hello to Glenn. How you doing? You're all right. So I'm in those joining. I'm in a Maki. I'm just charging. I started charging at 12, 10 past 12 at 29%. Sorry, at, um, uh, yeah, 29%. 
and 60 miles, I think it was, range. And now in, the four, in 40 minutes, I'm up to 68% and 172 mile range. I want to get to 80%, which the display in front of me is actually telling me uh, will be at 106. And that time has improved, so the charging rate must be going up. Because when I first started, it was telling me that it would be 11 minutes past one. Now it's gone to 106. So I'm going to try to get up to 80%. I don't need any more than that because I think the car is going back in a couple of days anyway. And I think that's pretty much all I'm going to be using. Um, and that will still have plenty enough for them to, to collect the car and take it back. Um, tell us about the accident, if you're aware, of the Lord Alim Bugatti. No, you've lost me there. No information about, no awareness whatsoever. I, I am vaguely aware of Lord Alim. I know that uh, he's a bit of an influencer in the car circuit and he's all about supercars and high-end stuff, but... I don't really follow him in that sense that I would know what that's all about. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, any questions about the Marquis, uh, feel free to, to, to hit me with them. Um, so, so as I was saying, so this is a car that, again, this morning I decided to go. I've been driving around town most of the time I've had it. And this morning I decided to go for a bit of a blast. I did about a 70-mile round trip up into um, sort of Hertfordshire area, that sort of area, you know found some nice roads around there and I got it up into because I've been using it on whisper mode around town which is basically the regular default cool calm and you know quiet mode and um, once I got out of town excuse me I switched into active and then I went into untamed mode you know it's got a, just a, it's got a pony logo for that one you know and uh, uh, Salman wants to know, how much does it go for in the UK? Well, this car, the base model, this is essentially the base model. Uh, it's a rear-wheel drive regular range. And this is 41,300 or so, something like that. 41,000, just over 41,000 pounds. And I think at the top of the range, with the extended range, all singing, all dancing, all-wheel drive version, I think it's just over 50 grand. So it's 50,000 pounds, 52, I think, something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'll, I'll double-check that later. Um, I think that there will be another performance version coming maybe end of this year or early next year. I'm not sure exactly when, but I think they're going to introduce another one as well. Um, Reza's asking, what was the acceleration like? Yeah, I mean, in active mode and in uh, uh, untamed mode, it was pretty quick. I mean, this one's not the most quickest. It's the six, I think it's 6.9 seconds. So I wouldn't, so off the line, this is a 6.9 seconds, this one, yeah. Top speed of 111 miles per hour. Off the line, uh, you do get, like, you know, with electric cars, you get that incredible acceleration. But then it's literally the, it's that zero to 30 miles per hour or so, uh, just under 30 miles per hour is when you're like, whoa, you know, and then after that, it kind of tails off. No gear changes, of course, single speed, no gear changes, which is quite weird. It's relentless, but it's also weird to not have that, that little breather. It's just straight and just goes, 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 goes. No, no relenting at all. Glenn, how much uh, of a new car is the Maki? Obviously an EV, but does it feel like a new type of car or just quite a regular Ford? This is a very, very interesting question. Your very good point, and it's, a, it's actually something that I've discussed in my review because it's very pertinent. And you're absolutely right to bring that up because that's the thing about this. This is actually Ford's first electric car. Everybody goes on about Mustang, this, Mustang, that. Forget about Mustang. Think of it this way. This is Ford. Ford is one of the oldest, most established, and biggest car makers in the world. And this is their first dedicated EV. It's dedicated. It's from the ground up. It's designed to be an EV car. This is Ford basically doing a Tesla, but doing it better. This is what I always said, that Tesla were going to get all the attention until proper manufacturers started getting in on the act and started showing them actually how to do this. And this is what Ford have done. This doesn't feel like a regular Ford. It feels like something else entirely. It feels very futuristic. You get in here... You know, there's no Ford badges. Deliberately, there's no Ford badges in this car at all, Glenn. Nowhere. You won't find a Ford. You'll just find the Pony logo. And that's it. You're, the only place I saw Ford was on the number plate. And obviously, the dealer or the manufacturer put that on. So they, they are really trying to give you an impression that there's a whole new breed, a whole new chapter. And I think the whole Mustang thing is the idea of this is a new breed. Like when the Mustang was first launched in 1964 or 65, this is a whole new breed of car. This is what the Ford are trying to tell you. So, Yes, to sit in, to look at, to drive. Uh, even the quality is above par for what you might expect. Um, 
but there's nice little different materials here. There's a kind of uh, canvasy type material here. There's a carbon type effect material. I don't think it's carbon, but it's type effect. So the mixture of carbon and aluminium. Then you've got the leather rest feel. You've got things like where there's no door handles. There's a touch pad uh, to open the door handle. You've got a lever here on the outside. You've just got touch buttons. And then you've got a little bar that pops out and actually pushes the door out so that you can grab it. All of these kind of things are very unique about this car. And then, of course, that massive screen, which has an, its own way of doing stuff. So it is, it is a very different feeling car. Um, 50K is a lot of money for a top end car. But to be honest, like uh, this 41K car, the regular one, pretty much well equipped, pretty much has everything you really need, let's be honest. And honestly, like I'd be perfectly happy with this. I think, I think the 18 inch uh, rims on this car, actually the ride, and one of the things I've had, the problem I've had with electric cars and hybrid cars is I'm finding the ride to be very rigid on these cars. And I think that's because of the way that they've had to shoehorn in the electric, electric batteries and stuff like that. This one, not so much. And I think, again, it comes down to the fact that it's been designed from the ground up as an electric car and so they've had to they've been able to uh, work around that uh Hokein says the tesla said they are two sometimes four times the price of this uh tesla roadster said they are two something four times the price of this have you say about this tesla roadster i'm not sure what, i'm not sure exactly what you're getting at but the tesla roadster i mean again it's a it's a car that nobody knows much about i did speak about that i think in the previous broadcast in a video, actually, I've just put a recent video up, haven't I, recently? Yes, on YouTube. And uh, that's the one where the acceleration figure, which is ridiculous. 1.1 for the uh, SpaceX package with the booster rockets. I mean, is he in cloud cuckoo land or is that real? And the thing will hover. I mean, it's either going to kill everybody or it's going to be phenomenal. I don't know. It's going to be incredible. If it's four times the price of a normal car, but it can hover and it's got booster rockets, so it's basically like a Back to the Future car, then yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's absolutely crazy. Hello to Henry. How you doing, man? It was good to catch you at the show the other day. Um, it was likely that if it was bad as the Ford, we, the public, would not have noticed it. Mustang makes it a talking point. Again very perceptive i love my audience they're so perceptive they're so they they get right to the crux of the issue and you're absolutely right and there's another thing that i talked about in my review as well is that it was a it was a, you could say it's a cynical brand marketing exercise to call this a mustang and not a ford and not have any ford badges on it but actually what they've done is they've grabbed headlines so love it or hate it agree with it or disagree with it you can't deny that it turned into a massive talking point and I think that that was the thing. It's like, here's how the Mustang, Ford wanted to make a big splash. This is their first dedicated, proper, ground up electric car. They wanted people to sit up and take notice. And how were they going to do that? They were going to do it by putting it in your face with a completely uh, different badge and nameplate that you would not expect. You were not expecting that to happen. Nobody was expecting an electric Ford Mustang. And so that's what they did. And by doing that, they've created controversy, sure, but they've created discussion and like like people say you know no publicity is bad publicity and you know and it's got you thinking it's got me thinking and i'm a dedicated hardcore mustang fan like like old school mustang fan so i think that it's it's, it's got me thinking and you know it gets to the point where you think that okay maybe this is for the sort of person that you have a mustang you have a v8 mustang that's your fun car that's your weekend car and then but you have a family but you still want to be part of that mustang family you get this, right? Makes sense. You can, so you, it's kind of like a get one of each sort of thing. Um, and if you're lucky enough, if I was lucky enough, I'd consider it. It's the first electric car that's got me thinking I could contemplate having one. Yeah. So very good point, Henry. Absolutely right. Uh, and again, Castro, it's because if the performance badge of Ford even with the EV statement. I don't, like I said, yes, that you could be right. You could be right. It is part of that. But I don't think that's the reason. I don't think that's why they did it. They didn't, they didn't, this is not, I mean, this one is 6.9 seconds. So it's nearly a seven second car. It's not like a performance. It's not crazy performance. You know, it's, it's, you know, there are SUVs out there that will do, you know, under five seconds now, zero to 60, right? So, um, and, and, I, and I think the, the, the extended range, the bigger version of this is, of course, much quicker. Um, but having said that, um, I think, in fact, I think it's actually a tenth quicker than the than the V8 Mustang or something like that. Anyway, or it's on par. But uh, but I don't think I don't think that's entirely the reason. I think the reason is, as I've said, 
I think the reason, as Henry has, has, has said as well, I think the reason is that it was to create um, uh, controversy. It was to create um, a story. It was to create attention around the car. It was to get people talking about it. And I think that, and I think they've been very, very successful at that. I think they've done absolutely spot on with that. So we're up to 78% charge. It's now 103. It's saying 106 to get to 80%. That's giving me a 199 mile range. I think uh, I will, I will, I'll wait to get it to 80% and then I will, yeah, that will, I think that'll be it. I think that'll be enough. So, it's 1.07 uh, p.m. It's saying full charge, 1.04 right now. So we'll, so I'm just about to clock off on this uh, broadcast. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep following. Uh, all the Mackie stuff is uh, on uh, uh, hashtag BCG Ford Mac E. That's where I'm tagging all of this stuff. That's how I'm tagging all of this stuff. And uh, I've had a few days with the car. I've got another couple of days. It's going back, so there'll be some more posts and stuff like that. I've just filmed most of the reviews, so that'll be coming in a few weeks or so. Just stay tuned for that. Um, but meanwhile, if you have any questions or queries or anything that you wanted to know about the Maki, um, do let me know. I'm... Uh, rather taken with it if i'm honest with you i am rather taken with it so there you go thanks so much to everybody that joined and uh that took part in this conversation and uh hopefully we'll catch you guys again soon in the next broadcast stay tuned thanks so much for watching take care guys take care Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy and hit the bell icon and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Whilst you're at it, subscribe to browncarguy.com and follow me on social media by just searching for my hashtag that's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even on TikTok. If you love my content, then please consider sponsoring and supporting it. And you can do that over at patreon.com forward slash brown car guy and you know what you can use my platforms to promote your product service or brand my youtube channel is now closing in on 3,000 subscribers as i record this total views are nearly 500,000, and the reach just over the last month is nearly 1 million so join these amazing people as my patrons including Muhammad Umaid in the UAE Partha in India a tech guru and social media consultant find him on parthans.com Tom Conway Gordon here in the UK Isaac Beauchard in the US he's got some great deals on cool cars at bespokeautos.com Reza Adil check him out at Alizade Cigars on Instagram Muhammad Qasim business consultant you can find him at wehms.com Siraj Abbasi at Tiles Italia on Instagram for luxury floor and wall tiling. Mark Waddell in Canada. Zach Cogliani, a globe trotting pilot with amazing images for sale at zachcogliani.com. And last but not least, my school chum Shahir Haki. Thanks for watching. More cool vids on the way. Catch you again in the next one.